Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry says that more than 80 Palestinians have been killed and many more injured over the last day of Israeli airstrikes on parts of central and southern Gaza. Israeli missiles struck the Nusrat refugee camp in the center of the Gaza Strip, destroying a mosque and a UN-run school where many people were sheltering. Two weeks of intensified bombardment has claimed the lives of hundreds of civilians as Israel says that it is targeting leading members of Hamas that it believes are responsible for the October 7th terror attacks. Several areas that Israel had designated safe zones for civilians have been struck in recent days, leaving ever fewer options for displaced Palestinians. Anger in the midst of mourning. The human cost is undeniable. If the death toll quoted by Hamas is accurate, this was one of the single most deadly attacks since the start of the war, carried out in an area designated by Israel as a safe zone. The target, Hamas military commander Mohammed Dahif, an alleged mastermind of the October 7th Hamas terror attacks. He's been on Israel's most wanted list for years and has survived multiple assassination attempts. Hamas says Daif escaped this attack too. Israel has vowed not to end the war until it has destroyed Hamas's military capabilities, and that includes killing its leaders in targeted attacks. Eliminating the Hamas leadership advances all our goals. The elimination of Hamas, the release of our hostages, the removal of a future threat for Israel from Gaza, and our goals on other fronts too. But is that true? Aside from the high civilian death toll from the attack, Hamas has already lined up a replacement for Daif if he is killed. Israel has used targeted attacks for years. Earlier this year, Daif's deputy Marwan Issa was assassinated in Gaza. The Israeli military has also targeted Hamas allies, Hezbollah and Iran. In April, one attack singled out the Iranian consulate in the Syrian capital, Damascus. Among the dead, top Iranian general Mohammad Reza Sahidi. It triggered outrage in Tehran. The attack on a diplomatic location tantamount to an attack on Iranian soil. In response, Iran fired more than 100 missiles and drones at Israel, raising fears of an all-out regional war. But most of the missiles were shot down and a further escalation avoided. Meanwhile, this latest targeted attack in Gaza is likely to complicate efforts to reach a ceasefire and negotiate the release of hostages. All right, I want to pull in now military analyst Marina Marone. She is with the War Studies Department at King's College in London. Marina, in Al Mawasi, Israel's army tried to kill a Hamas top official, ended up, of course, causing dozens of civilian casualties instead. How can things like that happen with an army that is so well equipped? Is it due to a, a lack of accurate intelligence or is the weaponry simply not precise enough? Good evening, Brent. Well, there can be a multitude of reasons because essentially the battlefield as it is, is very chaotic. So yes, um, as you have already noted, there is a possibility that there was a wrong intelligence that Mohammed Daif was in this camp, therefore the Israelis targeted it, um, taking into account uh, high civilian casualties as collateral damage because the importance of the military objective in this case would be quite high and therefore they decided to go ahead with this operation. There is a possibility that the intelligence was correct, but Mohammed Daif uh, also has his intelligence on the ground uh, and perhaps got to know that there will be a strike on the camp and had escaped. So uh, another possibility, of course, uh, what was it the actual target? And from what it seems, it was an actual target. Why was an unguided bomb used? Um, there are also different um, perspectives on that and the list is not exhaustive mm. uh, of course they are cheaper but if you're using a precision platform to deliver it you still can um, get the accuracy that you're looking for uh, and of course it depends on the target and that and the effect you're seeking to achieve so mm. 
Um, from what we know, there are still a lot of questions, and I think there will be an investigation in, in, into this whole matter and what actually happened and why specific weapons were used on that specific location. The IDF says that about half of the leadership of Hamas's military wing, about half of the leadership, have now been eliminated. I, I'm wondering, aren't these Hamas officials, aren't they simply being replaced and being replaced swiftly? So um, what we're talking about here is a so-called approach of targeted killings. And this has been going on, not just now. Um, Israel has been doing it for many years, trying to eliminate uh, key Hamas leaders and hope to um, eradicate uh, the Hamas's military wing. However, as the practice has shown, um, Hamas has been able to regenerate itself, which calls into question it's more like a hydra, this this whole organization, which, you know, you decapitate it and it grows a new head instead. And this is what seems to be happening here. So to what extent these targeted killings are effective um, remains questionable here. Military analyst Marina Marone, as always, Marina, we appreciate your time and your valuable analysis. Thank you. Thank you for having me.